Welcome back, everybody, to Silver Run Forest on Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we're going to go purchase the sawmill, the old sawmill, and load it up with wood. I've got a trailer here loaded up, ready to go, and if that's not enough to fill it up, which it probably will not be, uh, we also have uh, quite a few more 9-meter logs uh, stager over here, and I also have a pretty big pile of 6-meter logs over here definitely enough for a full container and then some and then i have um more deadwood and scrap wood over here including a full trailer so uh we're gonna do that first and then the plan is to try out the feller buncher in the latter part of this episode to see if if i'm gonna like it or not um well, yeah we'll see okay so let's get started with that i'll bring this up uh we're gonna pop down to the um uh paper mill too and see if that trailer down there is finally empty and if it is then we can bring the other trailer back up so um the lumber mill the old sawmill cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars it's very expensive it's probably the most expensive production on the map uh, but once we purchase that um then we can start producing planks and long planks and wood beams and prefab walls I believe those are the four products uh, which of course will be able to go both towards the roller coaster and then be sold and or go to other productions and you know we'll make more money from it so that is the plan I'm having some um, some glitchiness with this trailer uh, might be just slightly overloaded but the cl the crane on it has really just been acting weird too so I don't know we might end up getting rid of this trailer and just getting you know either another logging trailer or oh see look there's no reason for that to happen <laughs> we're starting to tip to the right hand side I mean it's not it's not that heavy on the right hand side it doesn't seem like it is anyway so yeah it's just a little unstable so yeah let's uh get over here and get this uh wood dropped off after we purchase the mill and then we'll kind of see where we're at but i mean i don't know is it this doesn't seem like it's that overloaded to be this unstable who knows man who knows Okay, so let's park here, and then we're going to run over here and purchase the sawmill for a quarter of a million bucks. Yowzers! Okay, well, it's ours now. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to back it up into the unload area if we can keep it from tipping over. What in the heck is going on here? Yeah, I think I'm going to get rid of this trailer. It's just too too squirrely, man. And once you own the lumber mill, it'll automatically take the logs um, so you don't have to load them. So you can see the logs are starting to load up over there on the ramp and going up. And it'll just keep pulling the logs in until it completely fills up. Why don't we get this crane up off the thing here? I don't even know why that's got a hold of that. Okay. So yeah, it'll just uh, start feeding the logs in. It's pretty kind of fun to watch. does one at a time though one at a time okay so where uh where does this stair stairwell go goes up to here wow listen to the noises cool i don't think we can actually go in here though 
I'm just going to walk around and look real quick to see if there's anything to see, like carvings, for example. I've been here a few times, of course, but I haven't really... Oh, there's a ladder. Sometimes when you see a ladder, that could mean there's a carving around. Can't get under that way. Huh, I wonder what that's for. Looks like a big boiler of some sort. Okay, let's go jump up here. Uh, can't quite get up there. There we go. Alright, any carvings up here? None that I can see. Okay, what about... Yeah, I don't see anything that way. What if we go over across this little... Whatever it is thingy here. Doesn't like me to move through here very very well. Come on, I'm stuck. Oh no, I'm stuck. Let me out. Let me out, please. Let me out. Uh, Houston. All right, I can kind of if I can kind of move that way, but I can't seem to get beyond there um i'm not spotting anything anyway so okay let's go back this way if we stay right in the center we can get that far okay there's a crate in the way there can't quite get up on top of those This looks really cool in here, though, man. Looks like a sawmill. What's up here? A door that we can't get into. But it comes back out this way. All right, so it l looks like we've probably filled the entire mill. So let's go here. Uh, no, we haven't. Okay, so we've only filled it about halfway. Uh, but it's already pretty much started producing everything, and I guess we want to do that. So, yeah, why not, right? Uh, what I'd like to do, though, is I'd like to completely fill this. I wonder if there's something going on with these logs. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, they were stuck in the air, so... There they go, okay. Okay. Yeah, so what we'll do then is we will start making wood planks, wood planks long, wood beams, and wood prefab walls. All of this stuff at one point or another we're going to need uh, to restore the roller coaster and then later on, you know, to make the yachts. Uh, but we filled it up almost halfway with that load, so that's not bad. Um, so I think what I want to do is I want to take the rest of the wood that we have back at the logging site and bring it over here and completely fill this place up but what we're going to do like i said is we're going to hop down to the paper mill and see if the trailer down there has finally emptied because if it has we're going to use that and i think i'm going to get rid of this thing it's just i mean it's kind of kind of a nice idea to have its own pal finger crane on it but it's just so glitchy man which is too too bad it's kind of unfortunate but these pal finger cranes are still glitchy in this game no matter what you know i know the giants have improved things a little bit but they haven't improved it enough it's still too doggone glitchy in my opinion so let's do this let's actually roll around this way and we're going to <laughs> Get in that guy's way. 
Let's take this thing down to the shop, fix it up and sell it. And then we're going to run down to the paper mill and grab the trailer that's down there. So I will see you guys at the paper mill. All right, guys, uh, we're here at the paper mill and looks like it still has one log left. So we're going to instead to take that log down to the sawmill because I need this trailer. And uh, let's see, we got one thing of paper out here that is 1.3 tons, but I believe this translates to 3000 liters, if I recall correctly. And so... I wish that I wish that uh, you know if the game's gonna use leaders, just use leaders for everything. What the heck, man? Make me think too hard here. Okay, let's hook up our hoses there. Yeah, so we'll just take this log uh, back up to the camp and completely load this trailer up again. Is that a nine meter log? Yeah, it's a nine meter log. Okay. And then take another load too the sawmill and try and get that thing chalked full. Now if we just take a quick look see here. Okay yeah this is pretty full. It's not completely full but it's pretty full. And uh, still working on more paper. So I think like I said I think this has to be up to 3,000 liters for it to spawn the next roll. So we'll come back you know, when we have two or maybe even three rolls uh, before we worry about selling those rolls. Let's put a strap on this just to keep it keep it secure there. All right, fantastic. I'll meet you guys back at the logging camp. All right, guys, we're back at the camp. And uh, we have a bunch of 12-meter logs here uh, that I was going to put in the containers but again I'd rather get the the sawmill completely filled up first before we go back to doing the container and uh, selling the logs directly so let's get this guy loaded up Might need to re grab these more in the middle, I think. Wait a minute. Well, that gets them up pretty high there, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, that'll work. This machine is amazing, man, I gotta say. Okay, let's um, drop them down that way a little bit. Come back this way just a smidge and open up the clamps. Look at that. It's amazing. I can't uh, <laughs> I can't tell you guys how enough how much I really like this loader. It is just so good. It is so good, man. Okay, bring that out a little bit. Bring that up a little bit. Okay, now what we're going to do is clamp those. We could have we could have gotten more, but this is good. This is a good load because it's balanced, so it's going to be pretty level. Okay, bring it there, back it up just a little bit. Okay, that log there needs to be pushed in a little bit. Okay, let's grab one more load here. Just 
Still trying to get used to the to the controls here. Okay, let's see if we can grab this. Oh, it fixed itself for us. Perfect. Let's strap this down. And we'll take the next load to the lumber mill. guys we are back at the lumber mill and loading more logs in to the mill I don't know if we'll completely fill it my guess is we probably won't but we'll get close we'll probably get it to 80 to 90 percent with this load I have a whole bunch of six meter logs back at the logging camp um, that we can use if we have to to make this work also um, had a little bit of a mishap on the way over here um, the mishap starts with a T and then ends with a rain the dock on train <laughs> hit me and lest you think I was negligent I wasn't the problem with this game and I've seen this happen to other youtubers too that I've watched is that the warning, you know, the warning lights and the barricades for the train, they don't come down until the train is like right there. I mean, within a couple of seconds, as soon as those lights start, there's the train. I couldn't stop in time. And so it hit me and flew me way up in the air and flung me up into the forest up there. And so I had to reload the uh, trailer manually and drive you know get back out of the woods and back on the road and i didn't i you know i didn't have the the recorder running at the time when that happened um in hindsight it would have been kind of funny to see that but anyways that's kind of why the logs are a little weird and i'm gonna have to shove these back down too so that they actually go into the lumber mill but yeah they giants need to fix that man i mean when a train when the train warning lights and the barricades come down, that needs to happen way before the train is actually at the crossing. Hello? So anyway, yeah, a little bit of a mishap there. Uh, so let's see where we are. We're getting close. Yeah, we're we're probably close to about 80% now. Oops. Um, these logs are not going in, so let's back up a little more. There they go. Okay. So we'll just see where we're at um, after it takes this last log. It should take this last log. There it goes. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we're about 80 to 85% full. So I think what I would like to do is bring a load of the uh, six meter logs down or no actually you know what we should do since the paper mill is already full let's bring the scrap wood down and get that dumped in oh, yeah i think that's what we'll do okay so i'll see you back at the logging camp hopefully without any train mishaps along the way All right, let's connect to the scrap trailer here. I'm probably gonna get a couple of these because I filled this up pretty quick. And we have quite a bit more scrap wood that needs to go in. Uh, 
Okay, this might be enough to top it off. We'll see. Okay, so the painful thing about this <laughs> is it's going to take one log at a time, no matter how small. Uh, so this might take a little while, but uh, let's just uh, see what happens here. I guess we can do this. We can tip them. Well, except for that they're, <laughs> they're not really going. They're not really going out though. Can we get them down into the water enough to float them in? Not really. Okay. Oh well. I'm starting to kind of go a little bit there. You know, the game says don't don't drive too deeply into the water, but I've never seen what happens if you do drive too deeply into the water. Got a couple of them to come out. I really like this though, you know, the the fact that you load them into the water. It's very cool. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got them all unloaded. I reckon that if uh, if it completely fills it up, then the other ones just sit in the water until there's room for them. Does it take them in order by how close they are? No, it doesn't look like it. Hmm. Okay. Let's see where we're at. We're up to 90,000 liters of logs. And this can take 110, so we're at 91,000. So yeah, it's going to take all of these. So what I think I'm going to do is go back to the logging camp and load the rest of the scrap wood and bring it down. And then um, if we still need to put more wood in, you know, then we still have um, we have a whole mess of six meter logs. So I will. Um, bring you guys back with an update here in just a little bit. Okay, that's the last log from this load. Let's see where we're at. We're still not quite there because there was a lot of dead wood 
in that load and we don't get very much for deadwood so let's get the rest of the scrap over here and then we'll top it off with our six meter logs after that if we don't uh, completely fill it up all right guys we have our last load of scrap wood here let's see if this is enough to fill it up well look at that oh we almost got it all to go out there Not that we really need to. All right, so it's a 96 out of 110. I don't think it's gonna fill it all the way up. But most of this is normal wood. There's only one or two pieces of dead wood in here, so we'll see what it does. Okay, so that leaves us at 99,500. 54. So basically, we need about 10,500 more uh, to completely fill this up. Okay. So, we we'll just have to figure out how many 6 meter logs it takes for 10,000 liters. guys we are just about there i mean close enough <laughs> 109,692 logs at 110,000 so uh we're going to call that good and now we can just wait until it starts producing the products that we're going to need to uh get the roller coaster rebuilt and uh then you know just for sale and make ourselves some money so the items spawn as i understand it the items spawn in i think they spawn in this shed and then also over in this shed over here on the right hand side over that direction so we're just going to give that some time and let it start producing stuff and in the meanwhile we'll get back to logging and selling logs in containers so even after that i still should have i'm pretty sure i have at least another full uh, container of six meter logs and then i have two nine meter containers already on the property just kind of staged um i'm not sure if we have enough timber left to fill two nine meter containers but if we don't that's fine we'll just take the second nine meter container to the next property that we're going to do and go from there but the next thing i want to do now is i want to try out the feller buncher and just see you know how i feel about it so that is going to be the next thing on the list here as we proceed excuse me right, let's park this guy here And let's see, we've got, let's get this logging trailer out of the way for the time being. We're not going to use it for now um, until we need to bring more wood to our productions. And both of them are pretty full right at the moment. So we'll just get this guy out of the way for now. We're completely done logging uh, this side of the property so I think I'm going to start staging stuff over here and I've removed most of the brush and pretty much all of the stumps as well so everything I've got uh, staged up on that side I'm going to need to be bringing over here 
Uh, we do have this little a little stand of timber over here that we're going to do. That's what we're going to start with uh, with the feller buncher. Uh, but let's take these 9 meter logs, or no, these are actually 12 meter logs that are left over and get those in the container first before I do anything else. Actually, you know what? I think I'll just keep the truck over here too for now. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and Uber down to the store. And we're going to lease the Feller Buncher. Okay, so let's go here. What's on sale? Eh, nothing we're interested in. Okay, we want to go to Forestry Machines, and we're going to grab uh, this guy. And lease for $14,000. And there it is. Okay, so basically what this machine does is it cuts the trees you can hit cut a couple trees i guess it probably depends upon what size they are look at that blade and then you take them over to the landing and drop them there and then process them at the landing so uh let's get this over there and give it a try and see how we feel about it wow this thing is slow should have probably brought the low boy but that's right we don't got that far to go Okay, guys, we are back at the camp with the Feller Buncher, and uh, this tree here is going to be our first contestant. So let's get right up to it. And turn that on. And just drive right into it, and it grabs it. Okay. That's easy enough. Now, it seems to me like yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's already seems a little bit uh tippy. So, unless you're on like really level ground, it seems to me like you can't get two big trees, but I bet you we could get this little one. So, I guess we just drive into it, right? Um, have to line it up a little better. Okay, and then it, it just cuts it and, and grabs it automatically. I don't have to do anything more than just drive into it. But yeah, as you can see, I'm already very front heavy. I'd have to imagine there's a lot of built-in weight on the back of this thing. And then we just carefully drive the trees over to the processing area aka the landing so you know uh, um, I could definitely see how this could be useful as if you're in a flat area but what if what if you're working on a hillside though which is often the case with logging you know all right, so I guess what we're going to want to do is we have to think about where we're going to put these, process them, and then load them. So probably, why don't we lay them down this way? And then V to release trees. What if I turn this off? Okay, that just turns us off. Okay, so I guess we just do that, right? And let them fall where they may. Huh, okay.
So let's go... Let's go grab a few more before we get the uh, the harvester over there. Let's grab this big spruce here. All right, turn it on again. I guess we're a little too close. This tree is too thick for this. Oh, really? Oh, okay, that's definitely a point not in its favor. Seriously, that thing can't cut the spruce? Nope. All right, yep, that's uh, that's not good. I don't like that. Let's go after this ponderosa, big ponderosa and small lodgepole. We'll try it from cab view here. You're kidding me, really? Okay, so what that suggests is that this is definitely not a machine for big trees. So it's probably used for little smaller trees for thinning maybe. There we go, we got that one. Okay. You definitely wouldn't want to use this as your main your main harvesting machine, that's for sure. If it can't get the biggest ponderosa or the spruce. Okay, we'll turn the saw off. drop these off and then um, I want to try one other thing with it just to see what happens okay why isn't that one dropping Um, that was odd. Okay, I had to turn the saw back on to kick it out. Okay, let's go. I just want to see how it works on a bit of a of a slope. So we'll take it down here. It's a neat machine, but it's just, in my opinion, from what I'm seeing so far, it's not as capable as just, you know, the normal tree harvester. Well, I guess I don't really have, I've got a little bit of a slope here. Okay, well, it seems to be doing reasonably well. Can we grab this one too? Okay, now we have two fairly good sized trees. They're not the largest. So if this is on a bit of an incline, is it gonna tip? Uh, it feels like <laughs> it feels like it's uh, on the verge of tipping over, man. Uh, but it's not. I mean, it's hanging on to him. 
Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's kind of drive it more on this bank. Oh man, okay, that's uh, that's pretty sketchy there. It's not tipping though. Okay, maybe what you maybe what you do with these machines in real life is you try and keep them up and down instead of sideways on a hill. I don't know. It is you know it's a different way of doing this, and again it's obviously not meant for the largest trees. And because of that, I'm not, it's not something I'm going to actually use all the time, but I, I wanted to try it, you know, just to see what it was like. It's, it, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to control exactly which direction the trees land, too. Does a pretty good job of shoving them, though. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I think I've tried this enough t to get a feel for it and know that it's not something. Um, I think I'll be using because I, I, you know, I don't really see what advantage this gives over the harvester, right? Because think about it. I could have driven over there with the harvester, cut the tree down, and then drug the tree over here. Uh, actually, quite a bit more safely, in fact, <laughs> than driving it over here with this. Plus, with the harvester, I can cut it into lengths and delimit, too, whereas this can't do that. So I just don't see using this over the harvester if you have access to a harvester which of course we do uh, but you know it was kind of fun to try it out so let's go ahead and return it now that way i'm not paying more hourly cost for it and um yeah at least we can say we tried it right okay and then so now we just have to harvest uh get those delimbed and cut which we should be able to pick them off the ground with this The next, um, the next big machine that I want, whoops, that I want to get, and I mentioned this to you guys an episode or two back, is I want to get the Rotney, um, the big blue harvester, um, because I really like that harvester, and, um, that'll probably become our main harvester. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna keep the Volvo, too, the excavator here, because we need it for other work, like, you know, planting and whatnot. Uh, okay, so I think what we want to do here is I want to turn the head down and then turn it this way. Does the log go out the back or out the front? I can't remember now. Right, well, I guess we're going to find out in a second. Raise that up and open it. We uh, want to be set to 12 meter lengths. Okay. And then we just... Get over the top of this first one. Oh, no, that was my steering wheel. Back up just a smidge, okay. Let's drop this down and then... Yeah, there we go, okay. Okay. 
So yeah, you can still pick them up and delimb them with this, but like I said, I mean, I could have already done that in one step, right? Uh, I think we can probably get a six out of this. Oh, stop at steering wheel. Yeah, I gotta. I can control this machine much better if I just use my keyboard controls. We gotta t drive it like a skid steer, because that's, that's what it is. I mean, it's not a skid steer, but it's steered from the skids. Okay, how is it gonna grab the logs when they're all bunched up like this? Here, let's, um. go for this one here and then we want to get back to 12 meter length mm, seems to be able to pick it up pretty easily um probably well are we going to get another 12 out of this or not yeah, we did. All right. Awesome. Okay, can we... Let's go like this. I like, too, that if you don't pick it up right on the end, it lines it up right on the end. This is really the first time I've used this while the logs were on the ground. I've always, you know, cut, cut them down vertically, so it seems to work pretty good that, this way, too. But, you know, again, in comparison to the Feller Buncher... The Rotney and the Komatsu and probably all of the main dedicated harvesters, except for the real big one, um, you know, they go, they go like, what, 12 miles an hour? So if you factor in how fast they can also travel, uh, I just, again, I think they're the, definitely the better way to go. In the real world, my guess would be, too, you know, that a harvester is going to be a lot more money than a feller buncher. So, you know, that could certainly be a factor for a logging outfit. But again, it was it was fun to try. Uh, but definitely not preferred over this method, at least not for me anyway. Yeah, nice. So that pulls that back, and then we just need to change this to a 12-meter cut. And yeah, that's we're not going to get a six out of this either. So this will be go to the scrap pile. guys well that uh, finishes processing those few logs that we grabbed with the feller buncher so let's see what's next on the agenda we're sitting at two hundred seven thousand dollars right now uh, all of our productions are in good shape in terms of being full um, yeah I mean I haven't really advanced the time very quickly, so that's why it seems like these are just taking forever. So those are, you know, that's pretty full. This is full. You know, like I said, once this gets down a ways, we'll go back up and we'll set up a conveyor system for that. And we're we're looking pretty good. We're in pretty good shape. So uh, I'm going to let you guys go here. 
and uh, I'm just gonna keep logging the property and once the property is completely logged of course we will then replant it and figure out you know I think I I think I know what the next property is we're gonna buy for for logging uh, we are planning on you know purchasing these northeast plots up here or at least some of them uh, we went through that a few episodes ago when I took you guys around on the tour but we're gonna uh, we're gonna purchase this property for sure and probably this property because this is where we're gonna actually have our home we're gonna live up here uh, and set up our permanent home because it's just a beautiful area um, and I I am planning on logging the non redwood trees you know um, up here too but the redwood trees I'm for the most part I'm planning on leaving them alone and if I do end up cutting a redwood tree because we have to move it because it's in the way uh, I will replant it somewhere else okay so we're gonna kind of stick with the spirit of the game in terms of not cutting down those endangered species if we don't have to or be uh, or re, you know replace them now I'm probably going to purchase this land next I actually originally owned this but um, based upon the way I wanted to start this playthrough we ended up selling it but I'll probably buy it back it's 115,000 um, because this is very flat land so this is a really good area to log um, and that'll probably be our third you know plot that that will log as we continue on here in this really fun game so guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.